Hello, and welcome back to Splatoon single player. Well, there hasn't been an, a video in a few days, mostly because sometimes I don't feel like recording. Fairly lame excuse, yes, but there was also a Splatfest, I guess. We can use that as my excuse instead if you prefer. But anyway, <clears throat> it's time for World 3. And last time we didn't quite discover any of the levels yet, so that's our first job. Once again, there are six levels in this world. And here's one of them. You get a level preview there. Or at least a preview of the name. Exciting. But yeah, as I mentioned before, you can't... You can't activate these from any old point. You have to hit the big one. To start the chain. Here's the boss kennel. We can also open up another pathway while we're here. Though I think I need to be back up there to... I don't know where all the levels are, like, by memory or anything. Which might be a problem. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not. I mean... Some of them are fairly obvious. There's our path into the next world once we defeat this one. Where was I going? Well, there's one down here. Once again, a very short level preview name thing, if you were paying attention or paused the video for some reason. So if you're keeping track, that's three videos, or three levels discovered so far. Here's five. And somewhere there's a six. Somewhere. Now where would it be? Probably over here somewhere, because that's the the region we haven't found one in. This is, of course, the most exciting part of the video. Oh. Here we are. And since we just found all of them, might as well start with this one. Alright, time for the actually interesting part. <coughs> <coughs> Welcome to an actual level. With uh, trains in it. Upside down trains. Which don't really go into that many places. Interesting. Alright. I can't say that I ever took the time to look for these... Look at the background of this level to notice all the... Uh... Transportation. Hey look, it's the Zapfish already. Over there. Starting off real good this time. 
This is the part where they tell you can, you can jump off of ink rails. Thanks, Captain Cuttlefish. You are helpful sometimes. I mean, at this point in the game when I originally played, I had not yet considered trying jumping off of an ink rail. So, he served a purpose. I don't know what the purpose of this being all the way over here, instead of, like, near the rail is. Speaking of purposes. But just by this level's gimmick, I'm pretty sure that I know where this scroll is. I might be thinking of a different level, of course, which would mean that I don't. But, uh, you know, whatever. So, there's lots of ink rails, and you jump up the ink rails onto stuff. Nice one, bucko! Yeah, thanks. Thank you for praising my explanation of the obvious. I don't know why this is all about... <coughs> uh... Trains. But, yeah, you can hang out in places like this and... Check out all the weird details going on. Like that train sign. Or those blinky lights. Or I was expecting that holding position there would have some sort of weird music going on. Because that is the case in some other places, but not that one. Launch pad ahoy! Hiya! Ah, yes. I know exactly where the thing is. Well, we're gonna have to paint this first, though. And jump! And kill those useless things. There's a thing there, a thing there, a thing there. And you'll notice that this one goes off the side. To the Rewards for being observant. I... I don't think this should be right there. I don't think it's serving a purpose. You can't just scatter pieces of railroad... I, uh... Stuff... Around and have it mean anything. Then again, what do I know? I'm no railroad engineer. Maybe I'm not giving the Octolings enough credit. Well, gee, this looks dangerous, doesn't it? Oh. Make the most of that Ink Zuka. There's two of them. Single-player Ink Zuka fires a lot faster than the multiplayer one. About twice the speed, even. Launchpad ahoy! Might as well collect the other Ink Zuka while we're here. I doubt I'll use it, which means three points for me! Ahem, <coughs> final checkpoint. Boom. This is what I was talking about. There's little jingles and stuff. And like a train schedule. That's cute. I think there's some point in one of the levels somewhere where you can hang out in a spot like this for a while and hear Totaka's song. But don't quote me on that, because I don't know where that is. Sapfish is indeed up above, as we have seen previously. That wasn't a very good final obstacle, to be honest. Are these little security cameras or something? They just have pictures of the same octoling on them. They're not doing a very good job. Hurry, we got a wiggly guy. And we learned something! What did we learn today? 
With the creatures of the surface driven to extinction by rising sea levels, the ancestors of the Inklings were free to haul their ten-legged bodies up onto the abandoned land. This is how the Mollusk Era began. Surprise! This game is post-apocalyptic! Yup. Surface creatures, probably like us, were driven to extinction by rising sea levels. Which is exactly why Inklings got rid of the ability to swim. Yeah, good job, guys. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to what Captain What's-His-Face said there. That's not level 11. I don't care. This is level 12. Flutters. We haven't dealt with flutters yet. Hey look, it's Zapfish. You can see them from the start of quite a few levels, actually. And we've got some sort of overcast... TV sky going on here. These things can't be destroyed, that is indeed true. Flutters are basically just big honkin' ink showers that can detect you and then speed up and chase after you. But they get easily confused. There are most often in mazes like this, well, if you can call them mazes, where your objective is to find a key and, and get out, basically. And you can use the bottom screen to look for keys and stuff, but I always forget to do that and just end up finding it anyway. Bonk. And look, there's a Zatfish already, again. I really don't need to keep saying that properly. You'll notice that there's a Gusher on top of that one. And that one. This will probably be important. Anyway, if you get stuck under one of these, you die immediately. In case you, uh... weren't sure. Oop, I made a mistake. Hmm, can I... What? Using a different... Thing. Amazing! Actually using these bombs to not do the level in the way I was probably supposed to. Haha! Eat it. And there's the secret scroll. I think what it wanted me to do was to activate this thing by going over there. But, you know, whatever. And since you can jump off of them, you might as well be able to jump into them, right? Take that level and do what I want. I guess there was a reason for me to buy those alternate bombs after all. <coughs> Just because it makes it interesting and easier to hit things from places I'm not supposed to, I guess. Might as well use them while I have them, I guess. Here's some armor. We haven't seen armor in a little bit. Great. Yes, Cuttlefish. I know how keys and vaults work by now. There is yet another key slash vault to go going on. These keys are never really that well hidden. They look like pretty heavy duty keys though. And oh. Okay. Nothing under this one. Very important to check. Yeah, at least they get creative with what the vaults have in them. 
of all things to change up. It's not always just a launch pad or something, sometimes it's a fan, apparently. And the final checkpoint. Yeah, yeah, find the key, whatever. There he is. Well, that was difficult. Alright, let's go. And, uh, yeah, the, there's the thing from earlier where the guys had gushing Zelda. Why? So that you can get those things and then get back up, I guess. Seems a little pointless, but, uh... Oh, wrong. Wait. Uh, oh. That was almost stupid. Ah, I'm kind of surprised it only takes one burst bomb. Usually those things take two to do something. And today's lesson is... The first battles of the Great War ended in victory for the Octarian forces. The diligent Octarians easily dominated the Inklings, who were unable to wake up early enough in the morning to defend themselves. They have my empathy and sympathy. Cuttlefish, we're fine. kind of wonder. It'd be pretty dumb, but can I... No, there's an invisible wall. Oh well. I thought that would be kind of funny. Oh. Undeniable flying object. Why, that's a different U word. Also, welcome to Bluefin Depot, which is one of the other multiplayer maps, actually. It's this dude again. What a dread. So, Bluefin Depot is interesting as a multiplayer map. Compared to other ones, it can be a little bit difficult to navigate. Because you have to... Like, once you get down into the center... Down here... Well, you can't easily get back up there... Without... Climbing walls, or... Well, I mean... To get back up here in particular... You have to use this... Very unsafe grating over here. Since you can't swim on it. Which makes, like, going directly into the enemy base even sillier of an idea than, you know, usual. Then you've got these two side areas, which you can only get out of by climbing walls. Life is especially difficult if you're using a roller-type weapon on these maps. I mean, it's completely doable. These gushers aren't here in the multiplayer version. Those aren't in any multiplayer map whatsoever, actually. Hey look, it's a secret scroll. That happened. That's the thing about single-player missions that are in multiplayer maps, is... Like, multiplayer maps are not designed to take too much time to traverse, because, uh, it'd be kind of silly if they were. So, it's not too hard to get through them, really. I mean, they usually add more elements to them. This would be where the enemy base is. 
I sure am getting close to that thing that you just said. I don't know why there's a gusher there. There's not a whole lot to say other than explaining how maps work in multiplayer stuff. So here's this guy again. Uh, and also there's gushers positioned so that you can take out the minor enemies without any problem. Because Octarians are master strategists. Hooray! Well done! Hmm. Unnecessary! I can't deny that that guy was a flying object. It's true. This is the only existing photograph of the legendary Squidbeak Splatoon. The young man folding his arms appears to be the leader. When this picture was taken, the Great Turf War had been raging on for over a year. So, here we have a randomly... relatively realistic... depiction of... Cuttlefish's army thing, the unit, what's it... in earlier times. Still featuring Judd the Tuxedo Cat. I don't know why you need... Hey, shut up, I'm doing fine. I don't know why you need a judge in a... Like, a... Like, do you still need an impartial judge for... A more serious, not sport turf war? Is that a thing that you do? I don't know. Jeez, we need 1,000. That's a big number. Anyway... That has been half of this world, so until next time, when we do the other half of this world, this has been Shag. Once again, if you like my stuff, I could use your support in various ways. And, uh, you know, stay fresh. Please. <laughs>